Good morning, my friends. This is the Grim Flayer, and I hope you're doing very well today. Another MH2 spoiler coverage for you here, and we've got Necrogoyf and Altar of the Goyf. Tarmogoyf is the lifeblood of BG the Rock, and BG the Rock is the lifeblood of this channel, thus I had no choice but to cover these cards, and unfortunately, they're not particularly rock-worthy. They're not particularly modern playable, except maybe in a more dedicated um, discard or madness shell that we'll talk about near the end of the video, but as far as our mid-range purposes go, it's just not going to cut it. So I think these cards are extra cool. Altar of the Goyf, I love the idea of a shrine to Tarmogoyf, and you can't imagine how excited I was to see a black Lurgoyf called Necrogoyf get spoiled, only for my disappointment to be all the more bitter that it's just not going to get there in modern. But let's talk about why. Thanks a bunch for watching, and let's start actually with Altar of the Goyf, because it's a little easier to parse out and thus to dismiss. It is a five-drop tribal artifact. Now, this is pretty cool, because um, it synergizes with, with, with Tarmogoyf in so many ways, right? Um, first of all, it's a tribal artifact, so if you're playing multiples of these and one gets removed into the graveyard, you're getting two really uncommon types in there to grow your goyfs, and that's wonderful. Why they're killing your altar of the goyf and not just killing your goyf maybe remains to be seen. But anyway, let's, let's go on. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gets plus X plus X till end of turn, where X is the number of card types among cards in all graveyards. Lurgoyf creatures you control have trample. So if a Tarmogoyf attacks alone, Altar of the Goyf basically doubles its stat line and gives it trample. Now, the one thing that Tarmogoyf lacks is trample, basically, right? It's big enough already. It gets even bigger. It's not possible to be too big. So this is very thematic, very cool, and ultimately very synergistic. But a 5-drop, a 5-drop with no recursion, no ETB, no way to really protect the Goyf meaningfully, obviously, and, and you know, only 4 players playable Lurgoyfs in modern anyway. Um, really just nowhere near playable. Now Necrogoyf is a little bit more interesting, right? So it's another five drop. We hate to see that. Three generic and two black gets you a Lurgoyf that has star four for a stat line. The star is its power, and the power is equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. So the stat line is actually less impressive than it probably looks at first glance. The average Tarmogoyf as a 2-drop is a 4-5 in an average game. We're looking at maybe like a 2-4 in an average game. I don't have any, that's a little bit of an arbitrary, you know, data point. I don't have the math <laughs> to back that up, but maybe 2-4, 3-4, something like that. It does admittedly have a higher floor, right? Um, especially for the toughness. Tarmogoyf can be a 0-1 against Rest in Peace. It can be smaller and more unusual games, um, but, you know, a star four, at least it's going to give you a wall style creature, I guess, as a floor. And at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Necrogoyf reads, that player discards a card. Now, again, at first glance, this might be more appealing than it actually is. Let's actually parse this out. So, of course, this references Liliana of the Veils plus one. Lily's plus one, each player discards a card. Necrogoyf static ability, it is the same exact thing. But here is the problem, my friends. Here are the problems, I should say. Number one, we don't really need more of this symmetrical depletion. In some ways, redundancy is welcome, especially when it's value generation. You can never have too much of it. There's no such thing as like drawing too many cards in your deck. There is such a thing as playing too many discard effects in general, and there is especially such a thing as playing too many symmetrical discard effects. We don't benefit that much directly from discarding our own cards. Sometimes we can... Sometimes it's worth it, often it's worth it, but note how Liliana the Veil is like the only modern playable Planeswalker, where often you won't even activate her, right? Because you just don't want a plus one. Necrogoyf, number one, isn't as good as Liliana at all, because he's not got the Edict mode, he's not got the Alt mode, he's not a Planeswalker in general. Number two, you don't have a choice. Every... <laughs> at the beginning of each player's upkeep every time that player will discard a card. And number three, the templating is awkward. You can't even really keep your opponent hellbent this way. You get them hellbent, and then it's their turn. They have no cards. Necroglyph's ability will resolve in their upkeep. Okay, nothing happens. Then they go to their draw step, draw their card, and play it. It's just like it's just not getting there. It's just too clunky, too slow, and unwelcome redundancy with that symmetrical discard. But there is one final ability that does make it a little more interesting, and that is the ability of madness. Now, this is still too slow, right? Because it's a three-cost madness. 
And if we could cheat this in earlier or, um, you know, whether to get the big beater earlier or to just start symmetric symmetrically depleting earlier, then we'd be talking. But this is still pretty slow to get it down turn three at the earliest. And also on top of that, the only real madness outlet we have is Liliana the Veil. So functionally, you're cheating this in turn four. And the ideal progression would be turn one, turn two, whatever normal rock or jump things. Turn three, Liliana edict your opponent's threat. Untap, turn four, tick Lily up. And your opponent will lose a card out of their hand to the plus one like a scrub. But you get to madness in your Necroglyph with the exact three lands you used to cast Liliana. It's OP. Not really. That's like the best case scenario. And if that's the best case scenario, we're simply, you know, we're simply too cute too slow and uh, not doing enough of what we don't already have for modern. And as if all that wasn't bad enough, Necroglyph doesn't even play well with other core rock threats. You talk about scavenging use. If you've got Skuz and Tarmogoyf out together, then you can just eat all of the creatures except one if you're removing a lot of creatures against like a human's opponent. Tarmogoyf is still maxed out. Skuz is still huge, right? If you've got Skuz and Necroglyph, every creature you eat with Skuz <laughs> shrinks the Necroglyph, right? It's just not a very good combination. And then it gets even worse with Dark Confidant. Good old Bob trying to do his job, trying to flip you some gas, and boom, here's a five-drop Necroglyph. Take five, GG. Very, very sad. So just not good enough. But just to give Necroglyph its full due, we have seen Wizards implement a lot of madness payoffs and or enablers thus far in MH2. Maybe there are more to come. If there are more to come, Necroglyph should at least be something on people's radar. Asmore is one of them. Um, no, I will not attempt to pronounce this character's name. I've been known to mispronounce even monosyllabic names. I dare not test my tongue against that collection of letters up there. Um, Chainer Nightmare Adept is in modern now. And again, are these cards even really that modern playable? And if they are, is Necrogoyf really the payoff we want? I'm not sure, but at least this is maybe more promising than in a classic mid-range shell. Finally, 8-Rack. I don't know if, if 8-Rack wants Necrogoyf, but it could definitely be a pretty good beater for them. Um, the idea here would be that 8-Rack often doesn't play creatures in order to blank opposing removal. But if you are able to discard Necrogoyf to a symmetrical discard effect, and then your opponent subsequently removes it. You've kind of come out ahead on advantage anyway, and you're also just in general trading resources, which pro uh, progresses the 8-rack game plan. I don't know if that's something that they want, but uh, maybe that's one of the more promising shells in modern. For Necrogoyf, which is very cool, Altar of the Goyf, very cool as well. These cards do not rock, my friends. Sorry to say. Unless unforeseen Lurgoyf and Madness Synergies enter the format in the final stages of spoiler season. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know how disappointed you are that Necrogoyf is not a BG Rock staple, and I'll talk to you for the next video.